Hello Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. I'd just like to use this Cartesian diver here to show how gravity based on the mass of the Earth is a complete fallacy and that we do not even need to consider how things get drawn to the Earth if we are not concerned whether we are on a spinning ball and we might fall off or get spun off. Everything depends on the density and pressure of the element that we are in. Hello, flat earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. The so called force of gravity is only required to have us believe that we can stick to an imaginary spinning ball earth. We are told that it is the entire mass of the earth, that is, the density of the earth in a specific volume, a sphere, is responsible for the weight of objects. Hello Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. We are told that mass and the force of gravity are intrinsically linked, uh, comprising the glue which holds together the heliocentric model, allowing everything to stick to the alleged spinning ball earth. So let's have a look at that and see whether that is really true. Good news folks, today we have a 3 for 1 flat earth deal. Learn how you can debunk gravity using 3 different children's toys. Learn how a Cartesian squid can take down NASA. How to halt the enslavement of humanity with a simple egg. Finally. Learn how a cup of oil can save the human race from those evil Masonic Jew lizards. Modern science destroyed with these children's toys. Here we have um, this little kid's toy and all we need to do to make this uh, lid go down in the water is to adjust the pressure of the medium it's in. So if I add some pressure to the bottle by squeezing it, what will happen is the lid goes down. All right. Yeah, it wasn't suddenly affected by gravity, it was just a change in the pressure around it and the equilibrium of the two being put out of balance. So if I release the pressure again, it rises up. Oh, look at me, I'm shaking in my little space boots. We can see from everyday natural science that the idea that there is a constant force pulling everything down towards the Earth is simply wrong. So of course with the presupposition that there is a downward force called gravity, which is only really measured when dropping things through the air, we then have to counter that force with a buoyant force. But we can see here with these two jugs of water that one is more buoyant than the other. We have the same amount of water, but the jug on the right has more buoyant water because it's more dense with salt. Game over, man! It's game over! What the fuck are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? Here I have some cooking oil, an empty jar, normal water, room temperature water, and cold water, which I've just added some color to. Uh, so you can see here that um, this oil has a lot of mass. So I'm going to pour this mass of oil into the jar, okay, and gravity is said to be doing its work making the oil sink to the bottom of the jar. But uh, if we add some water with less mass than the oil... That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. 
Fuck. Oh my, 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 my. We'll just put a little bit in and see what happens. Okay, the oil, sorry, the water sinks to the bottom, even though the oil has a lot more mass than the water. What'd you do? Screw up like the Beatles and say you were bigger than Jesus? All the time. It was the title of our second album. Thank God there are flat earthers out there willing to do the real hard science experiments us globe tods could only dream about doing in hushed tones and whispered words. It's completely obvious these experiments have destroyed gravity, NASA, evolutionism, and Satan. But let's hear from the maverick scientist himself as to why. Okay, so it's all to do with the amount of space that the medium is taking up, uh, the, its volume, and this, the, the volume of the air inside here, and the uh, density of the different mediums and the object. We are here on the ground, quite low to the ground, and the air pressure on us is quite extensive. It's quite a force that we all know. And um, maybe the higher up you get, uh, the less pressure the actual air is putting on you. Same principle as this. You don't need to have the earth being a certain mass and creating a force which pulls you down to the ground because the pressure of the air at this level is already pushing us down. They had a big party out in the parking lot. Oh, Whoa, look at gone. this! Forget it. That might be out of the whole stadium. It may be! It is! It went out of everywhere, right on over the top. The astute student may wonder the science behind the Cartesian diver, and why, when it becomes more dense, it falls toward the earth and not some other direction. Almost like it is being drawn toward something. Forced, if you will, towards a massive, dense object. We just have a difference in the relative density. Not because of any force created by the mass of the earth. And so now we make the water less dense by adding some of the non-salted water. We have an egg floating about at an equilibrium within the water. But if you believe that we live on a globe and stick to it because of the force of gravity then you have to say that we now have an opposing force, a buoyant force acting on the egg. And we have the pressure of the water acting on the egg. Stanton drives it, left field, absolutely crushed, and out of Dodger Stadium. You don't see that every night. Again, the astute one percenter student may raise their scaly Jewish hand and ask how, exactly, does buoyancy contradict gravity? If gravity did exist, would the egg not behave the exact same way? The water has sunk to the bottom and is apparently being pulled down by the gravity more than the more massive amount of oil. So this in itself uh, completely debunks the idea that mass is related to gravity. That one is hit a mile. A majestic shot to the top of the bleachers out there. That pain in the ass Illuminati Catholic Freemason student would again raise their hand here and point out that mass is not dependent on gravity and that oil is not more dense than water. But, like a good flat earth instructor, you would send that student to the principal's office for interrupting your lesson with facts and logic. Of course we have two substances here which are of different densities. Although the oil is thicker, it is of a, it's less dense than the water. The water is more tightly compact on a molecular level. Before the astute student leaves for their skull and bones, meeting to sacrifice a virgin, they would probably point out to you 
that earlier you said that oil is more massive than water, but now you are saying water is more dense than oil, and that those two statements are opposite. And of course, the question that will be asked by people wishing to defend the globe is what makes up and down in the first place? Well, frankly, nobody really knows, but... What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. There has to be an up and down, but the up and down doesn't mean that we stick to a ball, and it doesn't mean that everything's being pulled to the center of the earth, as we can see here. And I base that on absolutely nothing. It is what's going on here has nothing to do with the earth beneath it. It has to do with what is in the container, relative density. And anything beyond that remains a mystery. At this point, the astute student has dropped the class due entirely to the instructor's lack of understanding of the subject. Perhaps this lack of understanding of gravity is due in part to the artificial restrictions on the evidence that would be accepted. If you view space as fake, and all images and research related to space as a lie, then I guess I could fathom it hard to distinguish the fundamental force of gravity from the phenomenon of buoyancy. Lucky for you, gravity can be tested and verified without the need of space. Gravity's effect on space-time can be calculated on Earth via time dilation measurements. Gravity's effect on light can be measured in a lab setting. There is plenty of evidence out there that gravity is the force that dictates buoyancy and not the other way around. All you have to do is look for it.